guys, welcome to today's uh, live painting demo. Um, I'm Allie, if you're new here. Um, I do these uh, live painting demos every Monday at 5 Eastern. Um, and we always paint something a little bit different. And today we're going to paint some ornaments because I thought that would be fun, kind of getting in the Christmas spirit. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So this will be an hour long uh, demo and all of my demos are free. Um, I do have outlines available for you to download if you would like those. So some of you already have and you can see what my um, panel looks like here. So that's what the outlines look like. Um, if you're interested in downloading those, you can just um, trace those. And I know it's probably a little bit late now, but all of my demos are available as a replay. So this is gonna be posted um, here on my Facebook page. It'll also show up on my YouTube channel. So if this is something you're interested in, interested in doing, if you don't have your outlines now, uh, you can always get those later. So I'm gonna post the link in the comments to um, purchase the outlines. It's just a $10 download. Um, and then you can grab those if you would like. Uh, I see everybody jumping in. Hi Kelly, hi Sherry and Verana. Uh, Hi, Kathy. Hey, everyone. Um, thank you guys all for watching. Um, sorry, I was kind of late this week on posting this. I just put this out today, and I also just put the outlines out today. So if you didn't get your outlines, that is why, because I was a little bit behind. I had a busy weekend uh, running a gigantic sale on my online classes, which was very successful and I am so thrilled that so many of you are now online students of mine. So thank you guys, everyone who bought a class this weekend. Um, the classes were all 30 to 50% off. That sale has now ended, but if you're interested, you can still get my portraits class at 50% off through the end of the year, then that class is going to be retired. All right, so um, yeah, please say hi in the comments, everyone. Tell us where you're watching from. Um, I always love to see we have people all over the world who watch these live demos. You guys are awesome that you um, faithfully watch every week, and I try to always show up here every week, so come up with something good to paint. Um, so this week, it's gonna be these ornaments, um, and I'm gonna move the camera in so you can see um, before I do that though, let me just make sure that I've got this flipped because um, with these demos, sometimes you guys get a mirror image and I think I have it corrected, but I wanna double check. Can you guys see, is this reading correctly as golden paint? Somebody jump in the comments and let me know just so we can make sure we've got it flipped correctly so you, you guys are seeing it the way I'm seeing it. Um, that would be awesome. And this is what we're using for the demo. We're using golden fluid acrylics for the demo. Lisa says yes. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Dawn. All right, super. I'm glad we got that figured out. My first, well, like my first, I don't know, 20 demos, it was all flipped. So I'm glad that somebody, uh, my friend Kathy showed me how to flip that so you guys could see it correctly. So I'm super happy about that. Um, okay, let me bring it in so that you can see. I have to think backwards now so that you can see uh, both my screen and my painting. Let's make sure we get them both in there. I think we've got them both now. Maybe I'll just back it up a little bit. Also, I have a slight delay in my comment feed, so if you guys... Uh, comment and I don't respond right away, it's because it doesn't show up right away for me. So I'm first seeing your comments now. Um, a lot of you that have said that, yes, it's showing up correctly, thank you. Still adjusting this camera just a pinch. I always wanna make it as big as I can for you guys um, on the screen, but I don't wanna crop it off. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so unfortunately the iPad is a little distorted, but that's kind of how we have to do it. Okay, so these are just some ornaments that I photographed at my house. Uh, I just kind of arranged myself a little still life here and um, took a photograph, and now I have these outlines. So um, I would love to know, uh, if for those of you who did get the outlines, I'd love to know if you're painting with me. Please jump in and let me know. I would love to see that. So I just transferred these using transfer paper 
and I painted over them. I made a light purple using uh, Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson, and white. And I just painted over those with the skinny little script liner brush like this. These are great for doing outlines. This one's getting a little worn out, so it's starting to curve on me, but these are the best for getting nice skinny little lines. Um, so I did that already. And now I'm going to go in and just start building up the, um, the shadows. So I'm not looking at the actual color of objects. I'm just looking for the shading. Um, and in this stage of the game, I am watering, I'm just watering my paint down. I'm not using glaze, um, I'm just watering it down. So I'm going to make a dark tone using Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray, which makes kind of a nice dark purple color. Um, and I'm thinning that out with some water so I can just start building up some shadows. Uh, Dawn says she's painting along. Awesome. I would love to see what you do, Dawn. If you're able to post that uh, at the end in the comments, that would be awesome. I know a lot of people would like to see that. All right. So I'm looking for the shadows. I'm going to start with these big shadows under the ornaments. So I'm going to just kind of map that out. Now this isn't quite as dark as what it will eventually be because I'm going to build up some more color, but I'm just starting by mapping it out with a pretty thin wash of color. And I have some dark reflections showing up on the ornaments. Um, and I am not being super careful about staying perfectly in my lines um, because this is going to be a loose little painting, so we don't need to be perfectly in the lines. Um, everyone's like, oh, great. <laughs> Actually, for a lot of people, it's harder to not paint in the lines than it is to paint in the lines, I have noticed. I'm just looking for these shadows. Again, this is Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray. I don't have any white in this mixture because that would make it opaque. I'm just watering it down to make it not so dark. Kelly's painting with me too. Awesome, Kelly. I can't wait to see what you do. Love it. Okay, so we're just looking for these shadows. Now I'm looking on the ornaments to see where it's darker. So here's something I'm going to point out. Um, the top edge of this green ornament is darker than the background behind it, right? But in along the bottom edge, it's quite a bit lighter. We actually don't have a whole lot of contrast, but in some places like right here, it's kind of glowing where it's actually brighter than the background behind it. So sometimes when you're painting an object, it'll flip where in some places it's darker than the background and in some places it's lighter than the background. You gotta pay attention to that. Um, so I'm just looking for the shadows inside my object here and I've got the oops bumped it down all right some of what I outlined are the shadows and some of what I outlined are the highlights so um like right here this is a highlight that I outlined and up here this is a highlight as well Um, one little trick that I will say, sometimes when you're trying to map out this grayscale layer of the painting, um, sometimes it's easier to look at your reference image in grayscale. Um, sometimes that will help you. I think we're just going to put all that in. Sometimes that'll help you to not get distracted by the colors and to just look at the tones. So that's one little tip. Got some dark down here. I need to mix up a little bit more paint. Again, I'm still just using that Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson. Uh, all right. So now I'm going to, uh, well, maybe I'll put some shadows in this part well no I'm not going to I was gonna put a shadow in here in this shape but I think I'm gonna leave that lighter because I can see it's darker behind it 
Okay, so I'm gonna put some shadows in this sparkly pink ball. But one thing I really wanna be careful with with the pink ball is it's kind of like this disco ball looking ornament. And I don't wanna to get too caught up in trying to do all these little squares. Um, for one, it will take forever. And the other reason is it will actually make it look kind of fake. We don't want it to look like way too planned out like a grid. So I'm trying to just kind of look at like the larger picture so I can see this shape right here is the highlight and everything around it is a little bit darker. So I'm gonna start there. I can also see I have a little bit of a highlight over here. So I think the area between it is a little bit darker. Um, and this new tone, it's maybe looking slightly more purple than my first layer, um, but it's still the same two colors. I just uh, mixed it a little bit differently, but it really doesn't matter at this stage. Um, that's kind of what's nice about this stage is we're just looking at whether it's light or dark and we're not worrying about the actual color of things. Um, so this little section here is a little bit on the lighter side. It's also kind of lighter down here. So I'm just going to wash over uh, the areas that I see that are not lighter. I'm going to wash over those with this color. I'm not worrying about those outlines. I'm just washing right in there. I might use those outlines later to indicate some of these highlights, but I'm not like tracing around all of them right now. I'm just gonna call that all one form. Uh, and painting reflective objects like this, this, is, this can be tricky. You know, these are simple objects, they're just spheres, but with all these reflections going on, um, there's really a lot of content there. Uh, actually more than what I thought there was when I picked this, but it's okay, it's gonna be all right. Um, uh, Kelly says, I went ahead and put in too much detail. I did the underpainting ahead of time. Well, that's okay, that's okay, Kelly. I'm gonna do more underpainting um, before we actually start putting the complimentary color washes on, so don't worry. Um, yeah, okay, so this is kind of my first round of washes. Now I'm gonna go back and push the darker areas a little bit darker. Um, I need to switch to a new brush because look at how frayed this one is getting. I really need to treat myself to some new brushes. I like square tip brushes and um, I'm kind of hard on them and I don't buy very good ones. So I just make them, I wear them out and then I get new ones. We'll try this one and see if it works any better. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back to the same two colors but now I'm gonna have a little less paint, or I mean, I'm sorry, a little less water, which will make my paint a little bit thicker. First, I'm gonna get myself a drink here. <laughs> All right, there we go. I feel like it's, um, it's tea season. It's cold and rainy here today. Um, even we got a little bit of snow in Tennessee, which is kind of strange. Nothing that like accumulated, but um, we got a few little snowflakes in the air, so I figured it's tea time. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so going back with that slightly darker tone, a little less water, and I'm gonna pump it up. I don't know if this paintbrush is any better. I can feel that it's actually about to, the end's about to fling off. <laughs> twist it back on so it doesn't go flying. Okay, there we go. All right, so the very darkest areas are underneath, ooh, that's a little too dark. Underneath the uh, ornament here. Um, kind of dissolves out a little bit. And then we've got a dark tone coming down underneath this one. Now there's a dark shadow that wraps along the left edge of this one that's actually darker than the, sh than the shadow on the ground behind it. So you see how I shifted that? It gets lighter in the background here so that I can allow for that dark shadow on the edge to show up. Um, now, let me see where else we've got some dark shadows. We've got some dark shadows kind of in between the little uh, hook here where there's kind of like that crown looking um, area, I don't know what you call that. 
<laughs> so just pumping up those areas that look dark. A little bit darker area here on the reflections. One thing I'll say about painting reflective objects is I think a lot of times we're afraid to paint the darks and lights as dramatic as what they actually are showing up. But when you paint something that's reflective, I mean, it's going to have a lot of contrast. The dark areas are going to be really dark and the highlights are going to be really bright. Um, and so don't be afraid of putting that in there because that is what's going to make your um, object really have make it look real and have a lot of dimension so don't be afraid of that just make sure you're putting your darks and your lights in the right places all those mid-tones you can kind of mess around with but you want to make sure the darks and lights are in the right places okay so we've got a dark really dark section right here and i'm gonna sort of indicate kind of little stair steps there that's going to kind of show us that there's that square pattern all right and it gets darker underneath here, kind of runs off the edge. So another thing about creating your own still life pieces like this is when you have dramatic lighting, it always helps you to show the form in an object. So when I painted these, I made sure that I had a strong light source coming from one side um, because if you don't, it makes it a lot harder to show um, any dimension in your piece. So think about that if you're setting something up uh, for yourself, that you want to have a strong light source on, on one side usually. All right, so now we got those darkest areas in. Um, and maybe I'll put a few more darks in this one. Um, I don't want it quite as dark, so I'm adding a little bit more water to my mixture. Um, and I'm looking, I'm kind of squinting to see where it's the darkest. And I'm going to give some little indication of this square pattern. It's kind of the darkest along this edge here. It's kind of dark right next to that bright highlight. Got another little row of kind of dark ones up here. Um, yeah, it's pretty dark right here too. So I'm just building up the color. Feel free to uh, jump into the comments, guys, and ask any questions. I'm trying to uh, look back at them pretty regularly. Even if you have questions that are not related to this demo, that's fine. Let me know if you have any questions, maybe about the classes you bought this weekend, because I know a lot of you bought them. A lot of you bought my Lively Still Life class, which is kind of similar to what we're doing here. And a few of you I saw have already done some of your classes. You've posted your pieces and I'm just like blown away that you already jumped in and started doing them. I think it's awesome. Okay, that's probably, is that enough? You know, I don't want this area to be quite so bright because I don't want to leave this as bright as this highlight because I know this is the brightest highlight. So I probably need to wash over that. I'm going to thin my paint a little, give that a little wash. Probably the same thing down here. And then I need to just like say a prayer and hope that this dries really fast because I've got some more painting to do and I need to layer it on top. I'll just do a quick little wash over this one too. And just leave those, oh, I should have left that white. That's our brightest area right there. Always wanna keep your brightest bright. So it's kind of like watercolor painting. And I've never been a watercolor painter, but this stage of the painting is kind of similar to watercolor. 
Uh, Vicky's asking, what kind of light source did you use? So I just used natural light for this. Um, I just placed these on the ground, actually. I set a placemat underneath them so that it wasn't like on my hardwood floor because that would have been too busy. Um, but I just put them near a window. It was a sunny day. Um, so that allowed me to have strong light coming from one side. But you don't have to, I, I guess a window would be best, but you could always use like a spotlight too. Okay, so this is almost dry enough for me to go in and start putting my complimentary color underpainting. So I'm gonna take just a minute, get a drink of tea, and uh, think about what colors I wanna put down. So um, if you've seen my demos before, you know that I like to do a complimentary color underpainting. But I don't wanna always do the true complement, and complement means opposite on the color wheel. Um, sometimes I kind of fudge it a little bit and I just think about like if the image is going to be something really warm then I'll put something cool down if it's going to be cool I'll put something warm down um, so I think uh, well I know for the background since it's a blue color I think I'm going to do my burnt orange I tend to do that a lot in the background um, and I gotta think about what I wanna put underneath the green ball um, and the magenta one. Actually, I'm gonna put magenta down under the green because those are kind of opposites and I think that will look kind of cool to play off of the color I'm gonna layer on top of the, the big one. So why don't we start there? Because I think the green one is dry enough. So I'm going to use Quinacridone Magenta by Golden, which is one of my most favorite colors. You guys know I use this like in every demo. I love this color because it's a, it's a paint that you just can't mix this color. Like no matter how hard you try, you just can't mix it. So you kind of have to buy it. Um, but it's so vivid and awesome and just really fun to play with. So I'm just gonna water it down because I want it to dry quickly. And I'm going to do um, a quick layer of paint over my green ball. Um, and I'm not being uh, super careful about my edges. I'm letting this run right off because I want to keep those edges loose and you don't need to be tight with your underpainting, well, any of it. But the underpainting sets the tone for the rest of the painting. So. If you're loose in your underpainting, it'll help you to be loose later on. So there you go. Just wash over that with some magenta. All right, now let's see if this is dry enough. Probably. Um, I'm going to do um, that burnt orange that I said in the background. I think that's dry enough. So I like to make my burnt orange using alizarin crimson and Hansa yellow opaque. Just makes a really nice orange tone. Makes, I don't really like a very loud orange, so I like this kind of burnt orange. So I'm gonna put this into my background. I use this one a lot underneath blue tones in my paintings. Probably seen this mixture before if you've watched my other demos. Putting it in pretty dark and heavy back here because I know that this is going to be a dark area of the painting. And I'm just going to go right over that little fleck in the background. Okay, so we've got it dark there. Now I have to think about if I want to put this in the foreground as well or if I want to do a different color. Um, and I'm kind of leaning towards, I think I am gonna put it in the foreground. I'm gonna thin the paint out just a little bit more and I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to it, I think. Just to kind of change it up a little bit. So a little more yellow, a little more water. And we'll see what that gets us. That's kind of different, not super different. All right. Oh, I keep knocking it off get a little carried away. All right. Okay. I'm just filling this in. 
And I'm doing this kind of quick and spreading my paint out so that it will dry quickly for me so that I can go in and layer more colors right on top. Oh, and I'm actually gonna put this right in the shadow too. Okay, so we got that down everywhere else. Now we gotta think about what we wanna put under that magenta. And I'm thinking I want to do green. I'm going to do um, Thalo Green Blue Shade by Golden. This is another one of my really favorite colors. Um, it's like a really strong emerald green. It's super pretty. Um, so we'll put that down. Adding some water to it. All right. I'm just going right on top of everything I've already put down. The areas where my bright highlights are, I don't want to put the green in too heavy there. I'm just going to put it in real thin there. It's interesting, this green kind of looks a little more blue because I'm layering it on top of these purple underpainting tones that I already put in. All right, so you got our underpainting all wrapped up in there. This is starting to dry, so we might be able to uh, layer over that. Looks like I've got a few drips here. Um, in the meantime, um, I'll just talk a little bit about materials and look at your questions here. Uh, if you were on a budget, which five out of six golden colors would you use? Ooh, that's a tough one. So I don't know if you have my list of my favorite golden paints, but you guys can find that on my website. Um, that's probably not five or six. That was probably more like eight. Um, I would say the colors you don't need to necessarily buy golden would be like white. You could use other colors for white or browns. Don't worry about, you know, it doesn't have to be golden for browns. Um, but like my favorite really awesome golden colors would be the magenta, the phthalo green and phthalo blue. Um, and pyrrol red light is really good for skin tones. Um, enhance the yellow opaque because yellow is a tough color to get. It's tough to get a yellow that packs much punch, but the enhance the yellow opaque does. It's not like super transparent. So that's another really good one. So those would probably be the ones I would invest in. Um, I use Payne's gray a lot, but I think you could use another paint for that. Um, yeah, hope that helps. Um, also, I was just going to say, this is just a wood panel. This is one from Hobby Lobby. This is what I like to paint on. I usually like to paint on a panel that has a little bit thicker edge to it, but this is what I had um, laying around. So this is what I'm using. Um, so, okay, now we might have time, or we might have wasted enough time now that I can start um, adding some color in here. I think we can. Okay, so I'm going to start with the bright tone. Um, on the ground here because that's gonna start giving us some shape here. So this is like a grayish white mat that it's sitting on um, and it's the brightest in the back, in the background here. So I'm gonna start there and I'm not just gonna use straight white though. I'm going to use white and some Payne's Gray and a little bit of burnt umber, I think, to kind of mute that out. Oh, you know what? I'm not gonna use burnt umber because I didn't include that in my paint list for this demo. So instead of using burnt umber to mute it, I'm going to use a um, little Payne's Gray. I'm gonna use alizarin crimson and a speck of yellow in there. That'll do pretty much the same thing as my burnt umber would have. I'm trying to stick with only using the colors that I included with the downloads, because those of you that got the downloads, I included a list of what I planned to use, so I wanna try to stick with that. 
Um, Bridget says, I was still able to get Hans Yellow Opaque this weekend. Awesome. Yeah, there, so Bridget had mentioned that um, that some of the Hansa Yellows might be going away by Golden. Um, but maybe Hansa Yellow Opaque is not one of them. I'm not sure. I'm adding a little bit of glaze in there. And a little more white. So I'm kind of making this grayed out tone. And I'm just going to uh, drop this in, but I'm leaving little bits of that orange showing. I'm not covering everything up. I'm just putting some dashes in and I kind of like to leave little bits of like windows around the edges of the forms. That always looks kind of fun. So I'm also kind of changing up the direction of my brush strokes. And I'm just laying them down kind of like quick and fat. You see how I'm not like hesitating? I'm just laying it down. Um, hi, Dolly. Thank you for watching. I'm glad you're enjoying it. All right. So because this is a pretty big open area, I can use a pretty big brush. This is a number five. So that's pretty big for a eight by eight canvas. Um, but we can do that because we know that that whole area is going to be this pretty much this tone. Um, so I mentioned it's the brightest back here. I'll go back and add a few strokes that are going to be a little brighter back there. But for right now, I'm just going to leave that. So we've got our ground in. Now let's put the blue in the background. Um, so I'm going to make that color. Um, let's see, it's lighter here. We'll do that first, I think. I'm gonna make that using Payne's Gray and a little bit of that phthalo green to make it a little bit more teal and some white. So Payne's Gray, phthalo green, and white I'm using in my background color. And I'm gonna add a little glaze to it to thin it out. Hi, Letitia, thanks for joining me. All right, so we're gonna put this color in the background. Yeah, I'm gonna, I like that color. That's gonna be good. I think I'm gonna need to lighten it up a little bit. It's kind of darker here. And I think we need to add some more white. But you know what we can do? We can put some of this in our shadows down here while we're at it. I'm gonna drop a little bit of that in there because these colors bounce off of each other. And that gives your painting unity, um, and it's just kind of more natural the way that things really are. Okay, so now I'm gonna add a little more white to it and put some of that in the background. All right, I'm trying to kind of show you guys my palette as I'm working here. Um, yeah. Put some of this in. And notice how I'm not blending these. I'm just setting them down next to each other and they don't need to be blended. And I know you guys want to, but don't do it. Uh, <laughs> we've got some of that highlight on the shadow down here. And there's some highlight blue up here. Okay. I think that's good. Put a little bit up there too. Now I'm gonna put the darker blue in the background. So I'm gonna go back to my recipe that I had before, which was Payne's Gray and Thalo Green. I'm gonna make it a little bit, add a little bit more Payne's Gray. So there's a pinch of white in there too. I'm gonna use this really dark color, which will have mostly Payne's Gray, and put some of that for our darkest color in the background. And when you get these background tones really dark, it's gonna make the ornaments really pop out at us. Same thing with these dark shadows underneath the ornaments. When you create that contrast, it really makes it jump. Okay, and then remember I mentioned there were some dark kind of reflections going up on the ornaments. I'm gonna drop those in too. All 
little bit here. Okay. All right, so we got some color in the background, uh, starting to set everything off. Now let's drop some color onto the ornaments so that those will start to make some sense. So um, let's start with the green one. I'm just gonna take a drink here. So this is the green one. I know it's kind of confusing. The, the pink one that is currently pink is going to be our green one. All right, so I'm going to make a kind of olive green, um, and I'm going to use Hansa yellow, opaque, and a little bit of that phthalo green. And when I say a little bit, I mean a little bit, guys. That This phthalo green, if you guys are like on a budget for paint, you only need a small amount of this. You could even buy a one ounce container of the phthalos because they last forever. You hardly use any of it. It's such a such a strong color. So a little goes a long way. So we're gonna use Hansi Yellow, little speck of phthalo green, but now we need to mute it down. We're gonna mute it with some alizarin crimson. Um, like one of my pet peeves is lime greens that are too liney or too emerald. I should say, like too grassy. I don't like that. It doesn't feel natural. So I always really mute them quite a bit with some red or some brown. All right. So I'm going to start with this kind of dark olive color. I'm gonna put that it's kind of going in some of these mid-tones. It's not going in my very brightest areas. It's not going in my very darkest areas either. And the, this color is going to kind of chip away at some of those outlines that I put in because um, we don't really want those to show up. Um, we've got this reflection of the pink one over here. Um, so I don't, I'm not gonna put the green in there yet. Okay. Now I'm going to add some white to this to lighten it up. That's gonna make it more opaque too. Maybe a speck more yellow to make it a little less muted. Um, let's see, Nikki's saying, I remember you saying straight lines like edges of tables should be straight. What about circle outlines? Uh, I gotta click your comment. Would you say strictly keep to that or keep shape? Good question. Um, so you want the overall effect to be a perfect circle. You don't want it to be like wobbly, but it doesn't need to be a hard edge, which is kind of the same thing with like the edge of a table. Like I let it wobble a little bit, but the overall effect is a straight line. So overall, I want this to show up as a perfect sphere, same as this one. Um, it doesn't right now, but we've got some layering to do. But yeah, that's a great question. Um, okay, so I made this new color lighter, more opaque. This is going in to some of the brighter tones. But be very, very careful, guys, not to cover up all of your pink. Don't do it. Save some pink. It's so easy to get carried away. And as you're doing your brush strokes, think about that sphere shape. Um... You see, I'm still using a big brush. Don't use a little tiny one yet. Um, kind of squinting my object. All right. Um, okay, that's enough of that. Um, now I think maybe now I'll switch down. No, I'm not gonna switch down just yet. I'm gonna put in that very brightest highlight 
Um, so I need to get some fresh white because my white is a little contaminated. Uh, thank you, Liz. Okay, so I'm gonna switch to a new area on my palette because I wanna make this really bright white, but I'm still gonna add a little bit of yellow and a tiny, tiny speck. I'm hardly gonna touch the green. I just wanna make this color just barely not straight white. Just the tiniest bit tinted to the green tone. And I'm gonna put that bright highlight on that ornament. And the brightest highlight is right here. There it is. <laughs> and actually we've got a couple other little ones on the side here. Um, yeah, that's the brightest. Um, now I see where my background kind of cut into this one a little bit too much and I should have a darker blue edge there. Um, so I'm gonna go back into that dark blue that I was using before and maybe add a little green to it. Uh, and just bring that edge back. So we kind of lost that right here. It's okay that it came in a little bit. I just needed to kind of bring that back. So this is a little bit more of like a minty green color here. Okay. You guys see this color in my palette? It's kind of like, I used a little bit of the Payne's Gray, a little bit of the phthalo green, whatever was left on my brush and some white. I'm gonna put a little more yellow in there, make it a little bit more green, and I see a little dash of this down at the bottom of this ornament too. Uh, it's not quite dark enough. I'll put some in right here. Um, I'm just gonna drop this in a few other places. Then we need to make a darker green. Um, so I think I'm gonna switch to a new brush because that brush was all kind of gunky anyways. Um, and I'm gonna make a new dark green on my palette. So I'm going to use uh, Payne's Gray for my dark green. Um, probably Payne's Gray, Hansa Yellow Opaque. Maybe just those two, I don't know. Let's see how this looks. You guys have any more questions, comments, com concerns? <laughs> okay, so this new dark green is just Payne's Gray and Hansa Yellow Opaque. And I'm gonna get a little bit tight here because I wanna put this in just the right place here. See, I switched down to a much smaller brush because I want to get these shapes in just right. But now I think I actually do need to go big again. Maybe. Put some of this dark in along the little hook. Okay, I'm gonna go back slightly larger brush. And I need to find a green that's kind of in between this darkest one and the first green that I was using. So I'm going to make that by adding some more yellow to that Payne's Gray. So we've got Payne's Gray and yellow here. Um, and a little bit of Alizarin Crimson to mute that out. And I'll put some of that in this dark reflection here. Then I think I need to move away from this one because I'm gonna overwork it if I keep going too much. And I don't wanna do that. I wanna get this done. We need to get this little um, reflection of this one in here because it's not gonna be that bright. It's gonna be a little bit more muted. Um, so I'm going to use some Alizarin Crimson, some Hansa Yellow, which is gonna make kind of that burnt orange color. Um, 
and a little bit of cadmium red. We haven't used cadmium red yet. This is like a fire truck red. So it's a little bit more of a true red. I'm gonna put some of that in there. And we'll just put some indication of that other ornament just to kind of cover up our outlines a little bit. It looks really brown right now, but that's just because it's up against that magenta. It'll be fine, I promise. Um, let's see. I always find when using paint with a yellow color, they are really translucent and see through so much so that I need multiple layers to actually get a yellow and want it. Um, so that's why I like the, the Hansa Yellow Opaque is it's really opaque for a yellow. So it's really pretty awesome. Okay, let's put, start putting some color on this magenta one, shall we? Um, so let's start with the darker tones. So I'm gonna just do magenta. Actually, we might just do some straight magenta and glaze for these dark areas. I think we're gonna do that. Um, I'm peeking at our time here. Oh, we gotta get moving. We got like 15 minutes left, okay. So I'm just gonna put the straight magenta in these dark areas. So this is no other colors, just magenta on my brush, but it's looking more purple because I'm layering it on top of that green that I've already built up. So that's why it's looking so dark. Actually, it's looking like almost black, isn't it? Um, that's okay, we want this to be really dark. Um, so I'm finding the very darkest areas. That's probably enough. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of white to it and that's gonna make it a lot more pink and it's gonna make it stand out a lot more. And I'm also going to add a little tiny speck of um, permanent dark violet, which is my favorite purple color by Golden. Um, I'm gonna add that because I, I want it to be a little bit more purpley than just pink. So now I've got quinacridone magenta, permanent dark violet, and white. And I'm going to put this in some of the other areas that are kind of mid-tones. Not putting it in the very brightest areas though. I'm just kind of ever so slightly indicating that um, grid work pattern, but I'm not getting too carried away with that. And I'm still leaving some little bits of um, my green underpainting showing. That's important. So we've got some color built up there. Now in some places I see more of like a bright red tone. I think it's where it's reflecting against the green ball. It's showing up more red than purple. So in those places, I'm going to find a new spot on my palette. I'm gonna use quinacridone magenta, white, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of that um, cadmium red to put those areas in. So that's gonna be a warmer red tone compared to this very purpley magenta color that we had in there. So you guys might remember from my rose demo that I did last week how some places of the rose were more of a warm red and some were more of a cool red. Um, and by adding both of those, it gave the flower just a lot of depth and kind of a really nice natural feel. So, you know, while this whole ball is this magenta color, it reflects differently depending on what it's kind of up against. Uh, 
And I think I'm going to use a few little dashes of this onto my green one just to kind of show that it's bouncing off of that one. Um, and then I'm looking around here to see where else I kind of see this warm tone. I see a little bit of it right here. All right. So now I'm going to drop in my very brightest highlights on the pink ball, just so we can place those and get those where they need to go. So it's gonna be just kind of like we did on the green one where it's like almost completely white. So I'm gonna go straight white and then just barely touch the magenta. So it's gonna be mostly straight white. And you wanna make sure your white is clean because if it's contaminated with like blue or something else, it's gonna ruin your color. We want it to be just white and the magenta. Well, thank you, Jennifer, I appreciate it. All right, so here's our very brightest highlights. Dropping them in, kind of looking at that square shape, but not being too concerned with it. So we've got one bright one over there. So those are the very brightest. I'm also gonna use this color to put a little bit of that top hook up there because I would normally maybe use a different color for that, but since we're kind of in a rush, I just want to get in there. And we've got a couple bright little highlights on the pink area of the other ball. So we'll just drop a couple of those in, little tiny ones. Um, all right. Actually, we got a few other little pretty bright ones here. Okay, now we've got like the really dark and we've got the really light. Now we need to put something in between. I'm gonna add a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna go back to that other recipe I had that had a little purple in it. I'm gonna make it lighter by adding more white. So this is quinacridone magenta, white, and permanent dark violet that I'm just going back to. I think I'm gonna add a little bit more of that permanent dark violet. Make it a little more purpley. Okay, so now I'm squinting and I'm seeing it's really pretty bright along this lower edge here of the ball as well. And we kind of see some definite little square shapes. It's also pretty bright up at the top here. I need a little bit more of my permanent dark violet. And we need to kind of start pulling this ornament ball out so that it stands out a little more because it's got a little too, too buried there in the shadows. It's always fun when you've built up all this base and then you can just kind of lay everything down. It's kind of like the frosting and you know where things go because you've laid the groundwork for it. And so then it really comes to life pretty quick. We've got a little reflection maybe on this top there. Okay, and we've got a little dash of this in the background because this um, actually was kind of on the ground too down here. This one was like kind of throwing these reflections all over the place, which I thought was really cool. So you put a few of those in the ground there too. All right, so that's starting to come out. Now I think I need to go back and pull some um, brighter highlights into this warm red. So that was where we had the um, cadmium red mixed in. So that was cadmium red, magenta, and white. So I'm gonna pull those out a little bit more. So this recipe doesn't have purple in it. This is our warmer red recipe. So 
I'm gonna pull some of those out. And if you're following along with me, sorry, I'm kind of like going quick at the end, but you guys can always go back and watch the replay. I just always like to, you know, get this one like pretty close to completion at the end because I want to be able to show it to you. Um, Kathy's asking, what kind of palette is it? So this is just a plastic palette that I get from Hobby Lobby. And I like these because you can let your paint dry on these, at least with the golden paints, and then peel it out because I hate um, I hate cleaning palettes, so I don't. Um, yeah, so that's my, my go-to palette. All right. Okay, so we got some good highlights going there. Now I feel like I've got some more dramatic, like deep red tones right in the center. So for those, I'm gonna do the cadmium red. And I gotta find a clean spot on my palette here. <laughs> Speaking of palette, cadmium red and the quinacridone magenta, but I'm gonna have very little white in here now because I want this to be pretty bold. And I'm gonna layer a few dashes of this over some of my more muted tones here. Yeah. So I'm seeing this more dramatic red tone, more like in the center. Um, I've got a little ring of it right there. And a little bit of it there. So you just want to be careful not to make your ball feel like too speckly, because I know we're doing a lot of like different colors with the squares. Okay, I'm going to uh, put, just put a little bit of detail into this hook because we haven't really done that yet. That's kind of like a gray tone. Um, and so I'm gonna make that gray tone for that hook. Um, just using that same gray recipe we had before, which was alizarin crimson, Payne's gray, and white. I'm gonna start with it a little bit on the darker side and then I'll add some highlights. So it's just kind of, kind of like a purpley muted gray. I'm gonna put some, just give that some definition. It's dark on the left side, I can see. Yeah, that's probably, probably good. Um, then I'm gonna go back with a little more white and just bring out a few little highlights on that metal hook. And they don't go everywhere, just kind of a little dash of it right there, maybe a little bit right there. Okay, that's enough. Um, now I want to pull out the bright tones in the background. Cause remember we talked about how it was a lot brighter back here. So I'm going to go back to my big brush and that same gray recipe only now I'm going to add a lot more white to it. So that gray was just a Lizarin crimson Payne's gray and white. I'm just going to add more white so that it gets even brighter. Um, Janet saying, where do you get your paint? bottle where do you get your paint bottle size you use um so i like to order the big ones i order the 16 ounce ones either from dick blick or jerry's artorama um, so if you want to really suck up i suggest the big bottles because it costs less that way um but you don't have to buy them you know you don't have to buy that much yeah so where to get this Nice and bright. That's gonna pop it out. Go a little bit 
brighter down here. I kind of have to do think about, I do have to think about my sphere shape to make sure I don't get too wonky. And that this would be a good time if you weren't doing a live demo like I am, um, to step away from your piece and look at it from a distance and kind of like assess your shapes because um, sometimes when you're right on top of it, you could be distorting the shape and not even know it. So that's what I would recommend if you are not teaching a class. <laughs> um, Kathy says, Dick Blick has them on sale for 30 to 50% off. Very cool. I think they might always actually be 30% off according to Dick Blick. Like, they list their um, uh, like regular prices. I'm not sure if they're ever actually that price, but if they are an extra percentage off right now, that would be awesome. Thank you for sharing that. I'll have to check that out. All right. I want to just add a few more and more like really green pops on this one. So I'm going to um, make a nice bright green using... Uh, oh, we're already after six. Okay, just a couple more pops, guys, I promise. We're gonna do a bright green using Hansa Yellow, and I need to switch my palette. Hansa Yellow, white, and phthalo green, just those three. Because this is gonna be like really limey, but you're hardly gonna touch that phthalo green because it's so strong. So, super bright green. And we're just gonna drop, yeah, there we go. So this is really bright. That's gonna make those reflections really pop. Um, thank you, Dolly, thank you, Sharla and Vivian. Um, Vivian, I don't know what to do if they discontinue Hansa Yellow. I'm going to be really sad. Well, if they discontinue Hansa Yellow, it's fine. If they discontinue Hansa Yellow Opaque, I'm going to be a sad, sad artist because that's the one that I use. I really hope they don't. I'll have to check with my friends at Golden, see if they know. Okay. So oh, you see how just those like really bright pops of that um, intense yellowy green like really made this one jump out. Um, yeah. And I think before I totally call this one done, I want to put a few little pops of some bright blue. Um, thank you, Letitia. Um, so I think for my blue, I'm going to go to my favorite go-to blue, which we haven't even used yet in this one. So I just have to put it in there. It's phthalo blue green shade. You guys know I love it. So I'm going to put some little bits of that in with some white. This makes a very pretty intense blue. I'm not even sure where I'm going to put it yet, but I just like it. <laughs> I'm sure I can find somewhere to put it. Okay, so I've got that blue. You know, actually I'm gonna add a little phthalo green to it as well to make it more of like a teal. Yeah, that's gonna look good. So phthalo blue, phthalo green makes this nice teal. And I think I will drop a little bit of it into this ornament and in this ornament, cause I just want to. I'll put some in the background. As I can put some up there yeah I just want to like you know it just kind of makes it come alive um let's see Brenda says I didn't know the live was going to be this early oh I'm sorry yeah I'm Eastern time so for me live at five is probably earlier than many of you. But the good news is, Brenda, you can watch the whole thing again as a replay um, on my Facebook page. I will post it right away. I also post these on my YouTube channel. They don't always show up immediately on YouTube, but they get there eventually. 
Um, and if any of you would like to paint along, I'm going to post the link to the download for the outlines and the materials list in the comments. You can find that there. All right, I think we're gonna call this one done. Um, that was fun. I hope you guys enjoyed watching um, and I would love to see uh, if any of you painted with me. I would love to see what you did. Um, so if you're not already in my Facebook group, I've got a couple of groups. Um, some of them are just for online students that are buying a class, but I also have a new group called Allie's Paint Friends. And that one's like specifically for you guys who are watching these demos and painting with me or having it inspire paintings that you are working on um, to share your work with some of the other artists that are watching these. So check out my group, Allie's Paint Friends. That's a free group. Everyone can join it and share their work. And I would love to see what you guys do in there. Um, thank you again for joining me. Um, and I will see you next week, Monday, every, every Monday at five Eastern. Um, thank you, Pat. And again, thank you everyone who bought a class this weekend. Guys, there were so many of you and I was just like totally blown away. I can't wait to see everything that you guys do. If you, t if you're new here, if this is your first time seeing me and you're like, I didn't even know you had a sale. Um, I didn't know you taught online classes. You can still get a class. Um, my Black Friday sale is over, but all those classes are still available and you can find those on my website, Allie K Studio. All right, everybody have a great night and I will see you next week. Also, please share this if you liked it. I would love that. Please share it. Just click the share button. I love it. It helps me so much. Okay, thank you all. All right, take care.